I share with you an account of one family which was able to find blessings in the midst of serious challenges. And they grew up in a farm in Canada where he and his siblings had to hurry home from school while the other children played ball and went swimming. I went, I went to play ball. I went with I can go swimming. It's hot. Their father, however, had the capacity to help them understand that their work amounted to something. This was especially true after harvest time, when the family celebrated Thanksgiving, for on that day, their father had given them a great gift. He took an inventory of everything they had. On Thanksgiving morning, he would take them to the cellar with the barrels of apples, bins of beets, carrots packed in sand, and mountains of sacked potatoes, as well as peas, corn, string beans, jellies, strawberries, and other preserves which filled their shelves. He had the children count everything carefully. Then they went out to the barn and figured how many tons of hay there were, how many bushels of grain in the granary. They counted the cows, the pigs, the chickens, the turkeys, and geese. Their father said he wanted to see how they stood, but they knew he really wanted them to realize on that feast day how richly God had blessed them and had smiled upon all their hours of work. Finally, when they sat down to the feast, their mother prepared the blessings for something they felt. Gordon indicated, however, that the Thanksgiving he remembered most thankfully was the year they seemed to have nothing for which to be grateful. It was also the year that electricity came to their town, although not to them, because they couldn't afford it. One night, when Gordon's mother was doing her big wash, his father stepped in. You wash clothes as much as you sleep. I will help you. Oh, I'm so good. We made electricity. So the electrical line went up their lane that year. All it was nothing fancy. They acquired a washing machine that worked all day by itself and brilliant light bulbs that dangled from each ceiling. There were no more lamps to fill with oil, no more wicks to cut, no more sooty chimneys to wash. The lamps went quietly off to the attic. The coming of electricity to their farm was almost the last good thing that happened to them that year. Just as their crops were starting to come through the ground, the rain started. When the water finally receded, there wasn't a plant left anywhere. They planted again, but more rains beat the crops into the earth. Their potatoes rotted in the mud. They sold a couple of cows and all the pigs and other livestock they had intended to keep. All they harvested that year was a patch of turnips, which had somehow weathered the storms. Then it was Thanksgiving again. Their mother said, maybe we'd better forget it this year. We haven't even got a goose left. On Thanksgiving morning, however, Gordon's father showed up with a jackrabbit and asked his wife to cook it. Grudgingly, she started the job, indicating it would take a long time to cook that tough old thing. When it was finally on the table with some of the turnips that had survived, the children refused to eat. This is yucky food. I don't want to eat it. Gordon's mother cried. And then the father did a strange thing. He went up to the attic, got an oil lamp, took it back to the table, and lighted it. He told the children to turn out the electric lights. When there was only the lamp again, 
they could hardly believe that it had been that dark before. They wondered how they had ever seen anything without the bright lights made possible by electricity. The food was blessed and everyone ate. When dinner was over, they all sat quietly. Wrote Gordon, in the humble dimness of the old lamp, we were to see clearly again.
my brothers and sisters, to express gratitude is gracious and honorable. To enact gratitude is generous and noble. But to live with gratitude ever in our hearts is to touch heaven. <laughs>